Well, to say after spending five or six minutes probably with these guys beforehand, uh, I am more than excited because not only is Canvas Studio one of my absolute favorite topics in the history of all of Canvas. I know I probably shouldn't play favorites, but I do. Uh, Canvas Studio is my one and only true love in Canvas. It has been something that I have longed for for a long time. And when it came out and I was a customer and client, it was a no brainer for us uh, to, to add Canvas Studio to our instance. And I have two very dynamic presenters with me today, Teresa and Ricardo. But before we get to them, let me introduce our guest introductionist. I, I just made that word up. I don't know if it's right, um, but we're just going to go with it. Kirit, let me let me kick it off to you. Announce our presenters here. If you are interested in Canvas Studio, if you are thinking about Canvas Studio, if you are currently using Canvas Studio and you feel like you need more, I've already seen some of these resources that they're about to share. Don't go anywhere. Do not leave for the next half an hour, although I did extend that to them and said, listen, we <laughs> want to talk two hours about Canvas Studio. Let's go. I'm in. Um, so we'll see how this goes. But they have tons of resources and tons of things to share with you today. So stick around, and I can't wait to see what they have in store. So we'll kick it off to you, Kira. Appreciate you being here and uh, introducing our guests. Thank you, Eddie. Good afternoon. My name is Kira Chown, the project director, one of the team Canvas implementers at the Los Angeles County Office of Education. As technology has evolved, it has become a part of our connected everyday life. Technology has also slowly permeated into our instructional environment. While online learning was being locked to supplement classroom instruction, the closure of schools during the pandemic and our need to provide remote instruction has been an accelerant in using digital devices it has allowed us to think about how to deliver content in a different way. We are a California Canvas Collaborative partner, and we are so excited to introduce this awesome team from one of our districts. We have Ricardo Resinos and Teresa Magpaya Castro from Hacienda La Puente Unified School District, as they share their amazing work of how they're using Canvas. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Um, welcome everybody, you are here with us. We are going to be going over engaging all learners with Canvas Studio and Studio Quizzes. Again, my name is Teresa Magpayo Castro. And I am Ricardo Resinos. And we are Tectosis from Hacienda La Puente Unified School District. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, before we get started, we just wanna share a little bit about our story. Um, we have been using Canvas for a little over a year now, and we are so excited to be here because this is one of our favorite tools, and we have seen our teachers and our students just fly with you using Canvas Studio and Studio Quizzes as well. So we're used to doing more of a tutorial type of uh, training here, but we're going to be focusing on our story today and kind of giving you some tips as we go along. So I think Eddie is going to go ahead and put our uh, resources for you on the chat, but we do have a QR code and also a bit.ly that will take you there. It's just bit.ly uh, backslash studio quizzes. And when you click on that, or when you go there, what you are going to see is a Canvas resource page that we have created for you. Do not worry about the presentation. It's going to be available for you right here. We also wanted to make this interactive. So we do have a Padlet in here that Teresa is going to speak a little bit about. All right, so we put this Padlet in here because we noticed in our trainings, it's really great to go back and see the feedback from all the people who are attending. So if you have any questions for us, um, questions for one another, this is a great spot. So right here, um, there's a place to put questions. And if we get to it today, that would be great. But if we don't have a chance, we promise to go back into this and answer your questions. And um, we also have a place where you could put your aha moments, anything that you want to try for the future, anything we want to share. And all the way to the right, we also have, sorry, Ricardo, to the right. <laughs> We're also going to be um, sharing resources here as well. We know you have a lot of great ideas we would love to share. You could add them here. We have our presentation here as well. And Ricardo was reminding me, yes, the very first one, I didn't skip it. Um, what is your comfort level in using Canvas? This kind of helps us out as we do our training today. If you are in here with us, please feel free to share with us what level your comfort level is. So I'm gonna pause for a second. 
Are we good? Okay. So, um, so as you do that, then we're just going to kind of glance here and see, um, are we beginners in here? Are you intermediate? Are you advanced? And um, that will kind of help us as we do our training today. Along with the Padlet, we do have a uh, sample of what st a studio video will look like in here. We also had the chance to present um, studio to our teachers at Hacienda La Puente, and we recorded that particular PD, so it's available for you. Um, a couple of months ago, we were lucky enough to be invited to present at Canvas Caravan LA, and we did something similar where we actually did more how to use both of the tools, so you'll see that in here. The recording is in here. We have created all these resources for you that you can access, and they're all clickable for you. And finally, we have our contact info. Again, our emails are here. All of our social media is here. We are from Hacienda La Puente Unified School District under our assistant superintendent, Dr. Judy Fancher. Let me go ahead and go back. And so it's really great that we put our resources there because again, we won't have as much time to go over the nitty gritty of um, Canvas Studio today, which we love to do. And so you can always go back to that and watch our videos as well. So here's our objective. Here's the reason why we're here. We want to discover meaningful ways to use Canvas Studio to make connections, build relationships, increase engagement and act, whoop, and drive learning and instruction. That is why we're here today. This is what this tool has done for us. And so we're gonna just give you a little taste of um, one of our TK teachers. This, can you imagine TK? These are kids that, you know, they're used to seeing being together face to face. And this year it was distance learning. What a challenge. And this teacher has come a long way and she's used studio all year long. So here's a little, little snippet of our teacher here, Miss Adam. Hi. Okay, so we're mean. Not you, but me. <laughs> I am going to read to you the story of Herman the Helper. And so, Jay, you know, if you know Miss Adam, she's wonderful. She's one of the best teachers out there, but her and technology were not best friends, but she found it so easy to use. And we are so amazed. And we're going to share a little bit more of her work later on with you. Um, but let's go ahead and show you one of the students as well. Yeah, and if I can add about Miss Adam, just, just at studio gave her that go-to tool that made her mm -hmm. successful. I have to say that studio, and you'll see it later on when, when Teresa shares that with you, but we do have a student over here actually showing us what he was being work what, what he's been working on. Hi, my name is Albert, and today I'm gonna be explaining about bees. And, uh, you know, as a, as a high school teacher and also a, a soccer coach, I understand that making those connections and building those relationships always helped me create a conductive learning environment and creating that class culture that was conducted for my students to learn. So it was very difficult for me to recreate that during distance learning. How do I get my kids to have that sense of belonging? And honestly, uh, from our district's point of view, our teacher's point of view, Studio did that for us. Studio was the key for our teachers to make those learn that learning personal, to create interactive content, and we did it in many, many ways. From building relationships when one video um, had one comment and all of a sudden it became a conversation with the entire class uh, from our uh, kids uh, increasing engagement by just not doing, I mean, not, not just sitting there, but actually doing, uh, creating videos for us. And also Teresa mentioned that driving the, the learning and instruction, uh, collaborating, also uh, feedback from our teachers. So definitely studio uh, being used to the fullest potential was a huge key for us during distance learning. Absolutely. Oh. Um, studio is just uh, so amazing because it, it really gave our students the voice. And, you know, sometimes we have um, emerging readers or struggling readers. And even though they're not readers yet, it doesn't mean they're not thinkers. And so Studio gave them um, a vehicle on ways to show their knowledge without having to use the regular pencil paper or to read something to you. They were able to express their thoughts and um, it was, it's just been really amazing. And so we're really excited to share that with you. So here are our purpose and non-purpose here. Just to be clear, <laughs> we're going to be exploring the elements of Canvas Studio today and discover the capabilities of Studio Quizzes. We do not expect you to be experts at the end of this training because we are even not experts um, in here. Please do not feel limited to what is shared today because this is what works for us. But again, we all have our own needs. I'm sure you have lots of ideas of your own too. That's why we, we would love for you to share that in our Padlet whenever you get the chance. Click. 
<laughs> the advantages of Canvas Studio. Uh, like we mentioned before, it's a super user-friendly interface. Even our teachers were who were more apprehensive about technology found this easy to use. And for our students, it was very self-explanatory. So it, it's a really easy way for them to um, do visual media, like we see at the end over here, being able to do visual media to show what they know. And a big thing too in this middle is digital collections, being able to share um, videos that you've found, videos that you've created with other teachers very easily by creating collections, which we're gonna show you in about a minute. Yes, I think uh, Teresa said it best that interactive content, um, not only from our teacher's point of view, but also from our students' point of view, where uh, their classmates are now watching their videos and commenting and being involved and being engaged on what their classmate has to say, definitely. So where can you find Canvas Studio? So um, we didn't notice, not everyone has Canvas Studio. But this is something we we definitely, for us, it's definitely a necessity. So um, if you're interested in it, I would say definitely ask more about it, talk to someone about it and get it because it's amazing. Um, Canvas, oh, let me just see, I see a comment right here. We're gonna need you to, <laughs> thank you, Marcus, very nice, very kind of you. All right, so where can we find Canvas Studio? Canvas Global Navigation Menu is where we usually find it. Um, that's where I go. You can also go to the course navigation link in the menu right there, but that's gonna show you the um, studio for the actual course. You can go to the RCE or the Rich Content Editor, which Ricardo is gonna go over later on. And also the studio site. I think you wanted to speak on that, right? Yes, now. one of the one of the greatest assets with our district getting studio is that uh, Canvas actually creates your own website. That basically it's the your school name for us HLP Schools that instruction dot com. So our teachers and our students can be completely away from Canvas and just be specifically in studio and creating content inside of the studio website. Great, great tool to have. All right. So um, let's get down to business. I'm gonna go ahead and go into Canvas Studio right now and take you through. So I'm gonna share. There we go. <laughs> All right, so here we are on my dashboard for Canvas and on the global navigation on the left, I'm going to enter Studio through that way. So I'm just gonna click on that right now and it brings me into my own studio. So. I love to spend tons of time here, but then Ricardo might uh, disown me if I take up all his time. So I'm not gonna spend too much time, but we're just gonna talk about navigating through here very easily. So on the very top, I like to call this a little hamburger here, the three lines. You can click on that and you can access your studio. And you can also access videos that were shared with you. So if you click on that shared with me, I had some teachers share some dance videos with me recently, and you can go to those videos. And if you want to keep this for yourself, and want to make sure that you have a copy, just make sure that you copy it to your library. We're just gonna add little tidbits of advice here and there that can be helpful to you. So copy that to your library if you don't want to use it. So I'm gonna go back to my library right now. Down here, you could see the course media that we mentioned earlier. These are my actual studios inside of my courses, but I'm gonna to go to my library, which shows everything. But before I continue on, I just wanted to feature again that teacher that we we showed you earlier. We were looking at her studio earlier. We were like, wow, we were blown away. And we just want to show you um, what's possible. Let me bring that over to you. It's loading right now. There you go. And you could see, wow, amazing, right? I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I'm going to go through more. <laughs> Go ahead, Ricardo. I mean, I can see you on can, you can go from the first day of school back on August 5th all the way to the last day of school where she was using Studio. She was creating collections. But what a great resource. She doesn't have to recreate these tools again. Everything she's done is in here ready for her to use again next year. And that's what I told Ricardo. I said, if I was a teacher using Studio for the first time and I saw this, I probably would want to pass out because it looks like so much work. But it, but just like what he said, just imagine next year when she teaches this grade, she's going to be able to reuse everything she did this year. And the great thing about this, like I mentioned, this was a TK teacher. As a parent, this was so powerful to be able to go in here and review these lessons with my students on our own time. Um, so just imagine she found all these great videos on YouTube, any videos she found, and she also created videos on her own, her own lessons in here. So again, this is just you know evidence of teachers really flying with it. And she's not the only one. We have several teachers out there um, doing this too. Okay, so let me go ahead and go back. So here at the very top, I'm just gonna go in order so I don't lose myself here. So here at the very top, we just have some filtering options here. You can filter by date, 
by name. You can view everything. You can view collections. And um, collections are just kind of like a folder where you can put different types of videos. You can just organize your things that way. So, And you can also share collections too. So for example, um, if I want to share with Ricardo, I can share with him. And the great thing about that is that he can add things into the collection and so can I. So instead of sending videos one by one to each other, we can just put them in the collection, which makes things so much easier. I'm just gonna view all again here. So this is all of individual videos and it's also the collections down here. And if you have an individual video, I tried to drag it into a collection. It didn't work that way. You have to click on the three dots and you have to move to, and then you choose the collection you wanna put it in. Okay, just a bit of advice if in case you're wondering how to put it in a collection. All right, over here on the right, we have our plus collection or add collection. You click on that and simply give your collection a name and you can create it right there. I'm not gonna go through the steps with you for the sake of time, but I think you get it. Okay, so let me just make sure I'm covering what I need. Perfect, all right. So we're actually gonna go into a video right now just to see the different features that are in there. So I'm going to, Click on, let me just click on this one. So once you click on the video, you have some options here. You have your sharing, your downloads. Uh, you could delete it. Hopefully you don't have to, but you can if you want to. I'm not gonna go over all these things because we're gonna cover those a little bit later, but I did want to go over captions because this is so, so important. And a lot of teachers didn't know this was here. Imagine having your videos and actually having your captioning on the bottom. This really helps our students in their reading and maybe those students who need the reinforcement to read, you know, if they can't listen, um, things like that. So you just simply choose what language I'm speaking in English. So that's what I would choose. I would request it and it takes some time for it to actually appear. So I'm going to find one that I already did it for. Let's see if it worked. Crossing our fingers here. Here's another one. I'm gonna go to captions. Perfect, so this one I requested a little bit earlier and it says right here, review and publish. So I click on that and watch. It actually took everything I said and it typed it out and I have a tendency to mumble a little bit so I can go in here and I could fix it and then when I'm ready, I can publish it and it puts it perfectly with my video. So just you know, that is an option for you. I thought that was really, really powerful. Okay, so and go, going go back ahead. to those captions, I know we had uh, students that were home with three or four other siblings uh, at home and um, having the captions because their environment was very loud was just a huge tool to be able to be part of that classroom. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so here I am back in my library again. And um, whenever I get lost in here, which still happens today, I like to use these tools that help me, these three dots, I like to call them snowmen. Ricardo probably calls them something else. Um, and then the three lines here, the hamburger too, it really helps me get to where I need to go. So let's go to these three dots. So here are some options that you have here. You can create a quiz, which Ricardo is gonna show us a little bit later. You can also annotate video. This is amazing. I'm just gonna click on it and let's see what happens. So when we click on annotate video, we can actually add an annotation anywhere in a video. We can add a headline, description, even a link. So just think of the possibilities. In your video, you can link them somewhere else while they're watching. So I'm just gonna show you just really quickly. Let me go back. Um, let's see one, I think I did one already. Let's see if it's this one, if not, just kidding. Well, it's not that one. <laughs> one more try. There it is. Hey everyone, I'm And there you go. So that just it stopped my video and it popped up right there in annotation and I was just playing around with it. So I put a Zoom link. That's not really what I would do, but I would probably link them to another piece of material that relates to what I'm going over. If you just think of, Ricardo, can you think of other things to use that for? Uh, additional resources, right? Uh, additional content uh, for that student that might maybe wanna go more in depth on what you're covering. It just, it gives you a lot of different possibilities. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, so that's annotating video. You can also share this media. You can share it publicly using a link. You can use it as an embed code. Um, again, we are moved to replace thumbnail if you're like me. You, I always get captured at a weird, awkward you know, pose. You can change your thumbnail as well. And again, you could delete if you want to. All right, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on now to my favorite part, which is all the way at the top right. So once you have a lot of videos in here, which I'm sure you will soon, 
you can search for them instead of you know going through your whole collection. So you can search for them here and they'll pop right up. So that's a great feature. This is a great one to add. I'm gonna click on that. So if you have videos you've already created, don't think you have to do things over again. You can upload videos that you already have of yourself, of students, of anything, and just upload them from your computer. And you can even paste a URL for a YouTube video in here. You might wonder, why would I do that? Can't I just stick the YouTube video in my rich content editor and do things like that? But there's a reason why we would prefer you to use this one instead. Yes, uh, as Teresa mentioned, yes, you can put it on your rich content editor, but you will have to probably do that every year trying to find that particular resource. If you do it in studio, again, you're creating collections where you can have everything together. But not only that, I, I know as a teacher, I was always very concerned about those inappropriate ads that might show up before or after for my students. So being able to bring the video in studio and having it in here from YouTube um, avoids all of that. So it's, it's a great tool. Perfect, thank you. And yeah, so once our teachers realized that, because we had a lot of teachers going to outside sites to try to minimize you know, those ads and things that went around and they didn't realize we actually had a tool to do it right in here and they were like blown away. So um, if you didn't know it did that, now you know. All right, so here's actually my favorite one that I won't get to spend much time with demonstrating today, but it is record. If any of you have ever used, um, well, any kind of recording, but Screencast-O-Matic to be exact, I've used Screencast-O-Matic for years and years, and they must have partnered with Canvas or something because it is exactly, exactly the same, and not just exactly the same, it is the full version. I've been paying for it, but this is actually the full version here. I'm just gonna click it. It doesn't always work for me while I'm sharing a screen, but I'm gonna go ahead and try. So you can webcam capture if you just want to record yourself doing a lesson, something like that. Um, you can also screen capture if you're demonstrating something. I'm gonna give it a try, let's cross our fingers, and if not, I have a plan B as usual. All right. And not only not only the teacher, but also the students having the ability to uh, capture their screen and to uh, show mastery of something, you know, annotating, uh, demonstrating steps in a math problem. I mean, there's so many uses to use that tool. So I'm just gonna bring plan B right now. <laughs> this is a screenshot of it right here. So, um, what it does is it captures your screen and then you have some options. Let me go down a little bit. Right down here, this is just like Screencast-O-Matic. You can um, get your screen, your webcam, you can do both. You could do narration and this is a big one. It can also record computer audio. If you have Screencast-O-Matic, just the basic version, you can't do that. So just know that you actually have this full version in here if you have Studio, okay? So I can't take you through all those steps but once you record it, it asks you if you want to upload it into Studio and it works just as easily as that. Um, but before we go on, I think we wanna show you some awesome examples we have of um, actually some of our kids using Studio because that's how easy it is for them to use. Yes, if we can um, um, switch the screen share and we can show you that. Hopefully that's going to switch for us. There we go. So. Uh, we've seen our, our teachers use it in ELA and in math, all of those core classes. We're also seeing teachers use it in band. Uh, we have a teacher over here that is working with a student, and um, I'll just play a, a, just a bit of it, but what a, what a powerful tool for our kids. should be very similar to when we were taking the So incredible. I mean, we have so many samples, but we're going to highlight just a few. In addition to, to having the ability to have Studio with you on your desktop, something that we've noticed our teachers are starting to use is that they actually have discovered that they have um, Studio with them at all times uh, via mobile. So a lot of our teachers have actually um, downloaded download the Canvas teacher app and then... Uh, Right now the summer is coming, maybe we're outside, maybe we're, 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 we're enjoying with our family and all of a sudden that particular learning moment shows up. Guess what? I can come in here, I can click on my hamburger and Studio is right there for me to click on it and be able to record something that is gonna go directly into my Canvas Studio. So having the ability to have Studio on with me at all times is such a great, great tool. We're gonna go ahead and move on. Uh, so now that you've seen Canvas Studio, we wanna talk a little bit about Canvas Studio Quizzes. And I'm gonna go ahead and go uh, to our presentation again, and let me um, go forward a little. 
should have been there already, but it's, it went back. But now that we have our collections, now that we have our video, now that we created all that content, guess what? We can take that content and we can turn those videos into quizzes. And why would you want to do this? Uh, it could be from just emphasizing details in a video uh, to maybe just creating an active learning environment. And I'm, I'm going to show you how, what that looks like from a teacher's point of view. Or you could use this video quizzes as a type of formal assessment where you're actually grading the kids. And this is going in the Canvas gradebook. And if you're syncing with an, uh, with an SIS, it's going to those grades too. So you do have the ability to do that. Uh, these are just some images of what that looks like. We're actually going to go in a teacher's uh, Canvas course to see it but the analytics that you get out of the quizzes and the ability to use those analytics and maybe replan or go back and reteach something are just amazing. So we'll see that in a second. Um, again, how do we use um, Canvas Studio quizzes? There's two ways of using it. As an engagement tool, you can use it anywhere that the rich content editor is available on a page, on a discussion, on an assignment. But if you wanted to use it as an actual formative assessment, you do have the ability to use it via external tool assignments. And if we have time, we will show you how to do that at the end. Um, a great, great, great way to differentiate for our students. Uh, create more than one quiz with the same video. And a lot of our teachers are doing this, where uh, maybe they have a group of students that are already reading at the grade level, but there might be one or two that maybe need additional support. And with that same video, you can create more than one quizzes, uh, one, more than one quiz and deploy it to those students. So a great way to differentiate. Again, as an engagement tool and also as a formal assessment. And uh, we're going to actually get to look at it now. So let me go ahead and switch my screen. And then we're going to go to it. And I think I have to go here. Yeah, let me go to that. OK, and then here we are. So oh, maybe not. It's not that one. Sorry about that. So here we are. So we have over here a social science teacher that you're going to see, just like Teresa showed you. He has created tons and tons of materials here that he has available. You can tell which ones are quizzes because you can see the little rocket ship on the top right. So he's turned these videos into quizzes that can be used to assess or to engage. And just to give you an idea what this looks like, okay? I'm, I'm not gonna spend much time over here, but I'm going to go to one of his quizzes because I want you to see this, okay? So we're gonna load this quiz that he decided to use over here and it's going to load. And then as our students watch the video, you're going to see he was very intentional. He decided to hide the markers. So the kids have to watch the video. They don't know where the questions are. And as they go through it, I do know where the question is. So I'm going to forward a little bit. But all of a sudden, the kids are watching. And here comes the first question. And the kids can respond. We do have the option of doing true or false. We have the option of multiple choice. And we do have the option of multiple answers in here. Our kids can rewatch or continue. But what I want you to see is that this particular teacher had cross-listed his classes. He had 105 kids in this class. And if I go to insights, I want you to see how amazing this is. I can see that all of my kids throughout the entire video, 105 kids or 104 kids were engaged. They were watching. They were part of the video. And you can see throughout the entire video, they were there. Maybe because he hit the questions and they didn't know where they were, but they were all watching and they were engaged with the, uh, with the quiz. Also, the results. To be able to come in here and see how my kids did and analyze by item and see what um, I need to go back and reteach or what my kids are grasping and mastering, this gives me great, great data for me to see and go back and reteach something or maybe move on. Great, great. And you also have the ability to see student results. And I'm not going to show you what that looks like, but it's right there too. Great tool. So how do we use um, Canvas um, Studio Quizzes? Simple. I'm just going to go back to Canvas. I'm going to go to my studio as a Spanish teacher. Um, oh, you know what? Let me go to my actual class. This is actually our um, world history teacher. So let me switch it. Let me go back over here and let me go to my studio. So I have some videos. I have some collections that I created, not as um, vast as Teresa's collections, but they're right here. And I have, I, I was a Spanish teacher. So maybe I'm teaching nouns and articles in Spanish, right? You'll notice that I do have some quizzes that I created talking about differentiating for our students, right? I'm going to add another quiz for a, uh, uh, maybe a group of students. And then here, you would just come in here and you will basically go and enter the name of the quiz. And I'm just gonna call it test today just to do it. 
you will do a description for it. And this is what I was talking about. You can decide to hide the markers or you might want to turn that on. Maybe at elementary level, you might want to have them on so the kids can see what they're trying to do, or what they have to, to complete, but you can turn that on or off. Also notice, uh, Teresa mentioned the annotations before, and now they're in here to, to provide that additional resources or additional support for our students. You can turn those on too. And I'm going to get started. So I'm creating a quiz. So I decide that um, around 20 seconds, I want to have my first question. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to have the plus that is going to allow me to click and decide if I want to do a multiple choice, a true or false, or a multiple answer question. So if I go to multiple choice, it's going to open. I will just type my question right here. Uh, and I'll just do uh, what do nouns name and then choose one right Oops, sorry and then i will put my answers i like to leave it by default canvas studio chooses the first answer as the correct answer i don't want to be looking for my correct answer moving things around and picking c and then picking d and so on and so on so i like to just keep it always on the top because i do have the ability to shuffle choices back here so i don't have to basically be switching it teresa has something different to say about this go ahead teresa we don't agree about a lot of things, but I think from the elementary end, uh, especially if you're using this for the very first time, I would probably, um, I wouldn't shuffle choices. Let's say I'm doing true and false and I want them to practice it. I would keep it in the same place. So I'm not testing them on their reading abilities, but their really ability to choose true versus false. So I would have to remember to make sure I choose the correct answer. So it depends on your purpose and when the students are using it as well. But that's a good idea when the students right, are Right, right, yes. And again, <laughs> uh, it's all about driving the learning and the instruction, right? And, and the ability for you to add feedback for our students, right? With a correct answer or an incorrect answer, or maybe just provide general feedback. It allows you to do this. So again, if this was the question that I was creating, I would just press save and it will put it for me. Obviously, I didn't put them in there. And I would just continue. I'm just going to resume editing. And I'm, oh, let me continue, sorry discard this and I will just continue with my video and I will keep adding questions, whether it be a true or false or a multiple choice and so on and so on. And now that I've created this quiz, I'm going to get out of it. Now I have the ability to deploy it. Again, we have two ways of doing it. I'm just going to go to one of my courses so you can see this. So let's stay here. Let me go to one of my courses. Let me go to my dashboard so you can actually see it. And we're going to go into our course. And now I have the ability, again, as an engagement tool, I can come and put it on a page if I wanted to. I'm just going to go to a page, anything that has a rich content editor. And I'm going to go to Pages, and I'm going to create a new page. And now I can put my video quiz here. I will just add it in here. I will go to the rich content editor. I will go to the plug, find studio. Remember the ones with the rocket ship are quizzes. So it's right here. I'm going to click it. Select, and I do want to select the video. So I will embed it this way, and I will embed it. This would be a way to do it just for engagement. Now, if you wanted to, to do it as a formal assessment, as I mentioned, you will have to do that through assignments. I'm not going to save this right now, but you will go to assignments. You will create a new assignment, as we done uh, this year. You will give it a name, instructions for our students, uh, the amount of points that you have. And now, because you want it to be part of your grade, you do want to use this as an external tool. I will find studios, studio in here. And I will do basically the same thing that I did before. Just find my quiz, which is right here, and select the studio, uh, the quiz, and embed it. And now my students will get this quiz that is going to be sent to them, and it's also going to be put on the gray book. So this is the way that studio will be used. And I know uh, we cover a lot of information in, in, in very, very uh, uh, small amount of time. Teresa, do you want to go ahead and go back to uh, maybe the Padlet, or maybe there's questions? Um, no, I think I think we're good. I think uh, we've explained everything and we've given them the resources they need. We didn't get as many friends in the Padlet, Padlet probably because we didn't uh, put the put it uh, there early enough, but that's okay. But thank you so, so much. Is there anything else, Ricardo, that you wanted to add? And no, I, know I think it. that was it. And we're just so <laughs> thankful to have the opportunity to join you guys today. Yeah, yeah this is fantastic. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm so jealous of uh, the studio page with the 900,000 videos <laughs> over the course. Holy, wow. You know, here's the thing. Um, that's fantastic. And like you said, she now doesn't have to recreate that content for the following year. Very overwhelming for the for the new people <laughs> in the room that are just now starting in studio. Uh, but imagine without collections, what that might look like. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? The ability to folder that content now is is invaluable. Right. Um, you know, she and, does and, that a year ago, <laughs> and it's just a laundry list of. And, of and Eddie, just just video. to add, she was a teacher that was scared of technology, and Studio yeah. was the one that gave her the key to feel comfortable to be able yeah. to tackle distance learning. It was. Well, lots of love for you guys coming in on the uh, YouTube channel. Obviously, we had this awesome, awesome training. Kristen comes in with you two are awesome. <laughs> Thank We've you, got Kristen. Justine coming back in. You have to start somewhere, but setting up right is a great time with collections. We love that. Thank you so much for joining us today. These two are absolute rock stars in, <laughs> in Canvas you. Studio. I, I did, honestly, when, I, when they shared the resource at the beginning, and that is all in the comments below, uh, immediately I was like, whoa, big time. Like this is, this is legit. This is happening. So, so excited. You guys were able to share your story today and just incredible passion for a tool that uh, is probably a little underutilized globally. So we're really excited to, to kind of talk a lot more about Canvas Studio in the coming week. So be looking out for that content. Everybody out there as a, as a viewer that's watching today, also, we put down into uh, the, the comments section of this live stream, the California Canvas Collaborative, which is kind of a statewide collaborative that they're trying to start here. The conference is can be found at this bit.ly link, and it's just bit.ly slash C3Conference21. If you'd like to get more information either about C3, which is the California Canvas Collaborative, or get in touch with any of our presenters today, please email Carissa Duran, and her email is also in the comment section below. Teresa, Ricardo, <laughs> you crushed this. I can't, <laughs> couldn't be happier as a host of, of doing these every week to have just two absolute pros come in here and just, this was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.